Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel for those who want to learn and get better at board games quickly and easily. Today, I'm going to teach you and give you tips for Forbidden Desert, a super tense cooperative game. What I enjoy the most in Forbidden Desert is how it starts super relaxed and after a few minutes, everyone is at the edge of their seats. If you're new to the channel, subscribe now. Forbidden Desert is a great cooperative game where you play a group of adventurers who crashes in the desert and you need to find a buried city and repair a broken flying machine to make your way back home. What you do in Forbidden Desert is discover the area around the crash site to try to find all the pieces of the broken flying machine you'll need to fly out before the desert kills you. To win, all the players need to beat the game. This means the adventurers need to find all four parts of the broken flying machine and they all have to get to the launch pad. This sounds easy until you realize there are three ways to die. One, you can run out of water. Two, you can get buried in the sand. And three, you can get swept away by the storm. In other words, most of the time in the game, you will be wondering if there is a way out. Forbidden Desert comes in a really nice box and has some beautiful components. These are the desert tiles that make up the desert around the crash site. Then we have the sand tiles that pile up on the desert. We also have the storm meter to keep track of the sandstorms. And we also have the flying machine and its four parts. And we also have storm cards, we have item cards, and we have the character cards. Let's look at the other side of the desert tiles. You have three oasis tiles. Two of them have water and one is just a mirage with no water. Then you have eight flying machine part tiles which show you the location of each part. So you have the parts here. You also have a lot of tiles with gear shown on the bottom right. When you pick them up, they give you special items. In addition, you also have three gear tiles, which are three tunnel parts. You can find shelter in them when the sun beats down so you don't need to drink water. And finally, there's this launch pad where all the adventurers need to get to once they have all four parts. Now let's build that desert. Shuffle all the desert tiles and place them in a five by five square like this. And you put a hole in the middle for the storm. Make sure all the compasses are in the top left corner facing up. Then you place eight sand tiles like this in a diamond shape. And the others, you leave them on the side of the board. Then place the marker on the storm meter and then place it next to the board. You place the marker based on the difficulty level you want to play. The higher it is, the harder it is. Uh, also on the number of players you are. So this is for a three player game. This one here is for a two player game and the other side has for four player and five player. You place the flying machine and the four parts on the side of the board. Finally, divide all the cards into three piles. These are the storm cards. We have also the special item cards and we have the character cards. Now we can start playing. The game says to pick one of the characters randomly, but we sometimes pick the character we want to play. And the player who starts is the one who is the most thirsty in the group. For each, you place the markers showing how much water this you start with. It's always the maximum, though some have more than others. All six characters are quite different, so it's important all the players discuss their special abilities. Now, I'm going to explain what each of them does. Once you pick a character, take the corresponding pawn and place it in the starting tile, which is this one. Now, let's look at the explorer. While all the others move in straight lines like this, the explorer can move diagonally. It can also clear sand and use dune blasters diagonally, so it could clear this with one action. Now, the climber 
has two special abilities. One, when all the other players are either buried or blocked by a tile with more than one sand on it, the climber can go on it. The second ability is it can also carry one player and move together and none of them will be buried if they are together. The navigator can move another player three unblocked tiles per action, even through tunnels or even using the explorer or climber special abilities. The meteorologist can spend actions to draw fewer storm cards one less card per action. The storm meter says how many cards to draw. Additionally, one action allows you to look at the number of storm cards equal to the storm level. So at the beginning it will be two, you would draw two. And then you place one of them at the bottom of the deck. This is a good idea to place this one at the bottom. The archaeologist can clear two sand pieces for one action instead of two. So say it can do clear this and it could move here. Finally, the water carrier can use one action to pick up two waters from a water tile. So say it can go here, then it will excavate it and it can give water to players on adjacent tiles at any time. So it could give the red water. It also starts with more water than others. Each player's turn is in two parts. First, the player can take four actions. Then the player has to draw sandstorm cards equal to the number reached in the storm meter. Okay, let's have a look at the move action. Moving to an adjacent tile counts as one action. Remember, only the explorer can move diagonally. The second action is to remove sand. Removing one sand counts as one action, except for the archaeologist who clears two sand per action. The third one is to excavate. Finding what is on the other side of the tile counts as one action. So let's have a look at this one. So here we have found one of the parts of the flying machine. This tile here tells us the part is on this line. This tile here tells us it's on this line, therefore the piece is here. And then we put it on the tile. Players can pick up a part of the flying machine. This will count as one action. Note that you need to clear the sand and excavate the tile before you can pick up the part. And that's your fourth action. You also have three free actions. One, you can share water with other players if you're on the same tile. Two, you can pass items if you're on the same tile as well. And three, you can use special items that you found during the game. Let's have a look at these items. There are six different items. Let's start with the three jetpacks. With them, you and a friend can move to any unblocked tile. The three dune blasters to remove all the sand in one go from your tile or an adjacent tile. The two solar shields that protect all the players on the tile from the sun beats down until the start of the next turn. The two telescopes that let you peek under any hidden tile. The secret water reserve, which gives two water to all the players on the tile. And finally, the time throttle that gives you two more actions in your turn. You can play any item at any time and you discard it after you use it. Now, once you've done all your four actions or passed, it's time to draw the sandstorm cards. There are three types of cards. None of them is good. Most of the cards are storm cards. They move the storm by the number of squares and in the direction shown. When it moves, the storm leaves sand behind. If the storm is on an edge and cannot move, then it doesn't drop sand. So say, for example, here, the storm is here. And if we draw this card, then it cannot move. So it doesn't drop any sand. If you run out of sand tiles, that means the adventurers die buried in sand and you lose the game. Then you have cards that have negative impacts, like storm picks up and sun beats down. There's three storm picks up cards. Every time you show one, you raise the storm level by one. If you get all the way to the top, then you lose the game. 
And finally, there are four Sunbeats Down cards. They force all the players to drink one water, unless they are in the tunnel or under a solar shield. If at least one character gets to the skull, you also lose the game. If you run out of cards, you shuffle the discard pile and you play them again. Now I want to show you some examples of how the game plays. Let's start with the player's actions. As his first two actions, the climber is going to clear one sand and is going to excavate this tile. Whenever you have this sign here, the gear, that means you get a special item. So let's have a look at what the climber gets. And it gets a dune blaster and that's part of the second action. Then the climber is going to go to the explorer because the explorer is buried. There's more than one sand on that tile. That's why the additional sand was added with the X facing up here. That's not a problem for the climber who can move in and can pick up the explorer and move out. And that's the four actions. Now, as a free action, the climber can pass the dune blaster to the explorer who might need it more. After a play is done with all four actions, it's time for the storm to move. You draw the number of cards mentioned on the storm meter. In this case, it's three, almost four, but still three. Then make sure that the compass on the card and the compass on the tiles are facing the same direction. Let's have a look at the first card. So this one moves the storm. This, the storm is here. You move three spaces for the three squares. Every time you move the storm, you're going to place a sand. So you put one. Let's have a look at the second card. Ah, moves the storm again. So I'm just going to move here and here. And again, we put sand. That's a lot of sand after a while, and the archaeologist comes in handy here. The third storm card is that the sun beats down. That means that all the players that are in a tunnel or have the protection of solar shield will not lose any water. All the other players, like these two, are going to lose one point of water. Now is a good time to talk about water. If you reach the skull, you die. So to avoid that, you need to refill your water bottle. An easy way is if two players are in the same tile, they can exchange water free. The one giving will go down one and the one receiving will go up. You can never have more than the maximum number on the card. After a while, you'll probably need more water. If you have the water carrier in the group, he or she can pick up two waters from an excavated oasis for one action. So we'll go two for one action. The water carrier can also give water to players on adjacent tiles, not just on her tile. Without the water carrier, the only way to get more water is when excavating the oasis tiles. If you're lucky and it has water, all the characters on the tile receive two water immediately. It's best if you coordinate with all players as it's the only time you're going to get water. Finally, let's have a look at another turn later on in the game. The players have found and collected three of the missing pieces. They are looking for the last one. So it's the explorer's turn. Now the explorer is going to move through tunnels because that counts as one action. So we'll move here. Then it's going to use the dune blaster to blast all this sand out of here and be able to move into the tile. That's the second action. And then we'll excavate for the third action. What this tile tells us is the location of the last missing part, which is here. So we're going to place the part here. The part is still buried in sand, so another player will have to come and remove the sand before collecting that part. As the fourth action, the explorer is going to move here and make its way to the launch pad. Once you have all four parts of the machine, all the players need to make their way to the launch pad. The navigator is super handy with that. If they all make it to the launch pad, you've won the game. My tips to win at Forbidden Desert are, this is a cooperative game. You absolutely need to coordinate your actions with the other players. Maybe rehearse around and see if things go as planned. While the game can take a bad turn quickly, rushing through the game is not the way to win. Take your time to clear the sand or hide in tunnels. It, will, it may seem like a waste of time, but it will pay off in the long run. 
Be fully aware that bad things are going to happen to you. It's a safe bet to plan for the worst. Taking chances will probably lead to the death of a character, and it's the only thing it takes to lose the game. Not all the special abilities are obvious, and not all seem that powerful. But one thing is sure, you'll be much more likely to win if you make full use of them. Now, I've mentioned it before, but there's no shame in hiding in the tunnels. Try to find them as quickly as possible and use them as much as possible. Water runs out faster than you think. As soon as the players have found the four pieces and have all met at the launch pad, they can take off and they have won the game. That's how you play Forbidden Desert. It's a great cooperative game that isn't easy to win and will have you trying over and over again. It doesn't last more than 30 minutes, especially at the beginning, you'll be losing a lot. But once you win, you'll want to try with a higher difficulty level. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like us to teach. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.